Anyway, uh, if you guys buy Bibles this morning, we'll be in James. Uh, pretty tough lesson uh, for me. Pretty tough lesson for us. Uh, James, he kind of spells it out pretty good. And uh, pretext this message too. You remember James is talking to the Jews. And after they get saved, how they were having trouble here. So we'll get into it. Uh, we'll be in the second chapter and start with the 14th verse. And we'll be picking apart verse by verse probably as we get through this. So I want to read a little bit what the lesson writer has to say and interject a lot of his thoughts and some other thoughts and, and uh, your thoughts especially. If you've got thoughts and things you want to add, please do. Did you say 14 first? Yes. 14 Two 14s will be started. Okay. Uh, the introduction says, The book of James is a central portion of Scripture. It should be read often, but always in the context of why and to whom it was written. That's one important thing we've got to understand when we read Scripture. The Jewish Christians had moved from keeping the law to faith in Christ as a way of salvation. This newfound freedom from the law created tensions among them. Some concluded that only faith was important. How one lived was immaterial. Others not fully made the transition from law to grace and therefore did not fully understand the place of faith in the Christian life. Their emphasis was on law or works. James' words were a source of correction to each group. They needed to be reminded that their talk of faith must be balanced with their walk of faith in daily living. Talking and talk without walking the walk posed its problems then as well as now. James was saying to them in today's speech, get real. <laughs> you know, if we're going to talk the talk, we need to walk the walk. Amen. So, <clears throat> starting with the verse 14, it says, What doth it profit, my brother, talking to the Christian here, though a man say he have faith, and have not works, can faith save him? Hmm. Now, verbal claims might be obvious, but people have a tendency to do things that make them appear to have faith. Such as attending and participating in church activities or seeking <coughs> positions. True faith doesn't need to be advertised to be noticed. God knows who is faithful and who is not. Hmm. Uh, another thought I'd like to interject here is we're talking about faith and works, right? Uh, and both go together, as we'll find in our lesson. Now, some people consider, now this is my thought now, that work is coming to church. That's not work. Yeah. That's worship. Yeah. When we come to church, we come to worship. We can't say, God, I'm working for you because I'm going to church today. That's not working. That's come, coming to church is to worship God, to worship Jesus. We can't, we can't put that in our bag of tricks here and say, that's my work and that's the only thing I need to do and that's it. I'm good. I come to church, set my pew, pull up the little prior thing, and watch the show. Not so. That's not work. Yep. Work is what we do before and after church. Amen? Prayer. Witnessing. There's this whole list, and we'll get into them later. But work is what we do before church and after church. Yep. Now, our pastors, they work. They work getting their, their, their <coughs> message together and all that stuff, and studying and everything. And then when they come, they release that to us. And how we accept it is our work, right? What do we do after that? What do we do with that message? Amen? Our teachers work too. Yeah, some do. <laughs> I don't know if I work very good. It's a job anyway. to get that ready. I know it is. <laughs> it takes a little studying, yeah. <laughs> we can't merely come to church and say, I believe in God and think we're ready for Him. That's right. As we get farther in the lesson, we'll see. There has to be a heart change. 
And when there's a heart change, there's an attitude change. A testimony and actions that show Christ in us. That's where the word comes in. That's where the word comes in. So, uh, there's, the lesson writer has some good examples here. And I, I want to share them with you. It says, during a sermon, a pastor held up a quarter and explained what was required to make that coin genuine. He spoke of the quality of the metal and the minting process. He read aloud what was printed on the front of the coin. Then he, he did the same as what was printed on the back of the coin. Those words and symbols made the coin authentic. It took both to make its genuine quarter. He further explained that the front of the coin was not more valuable than the back of the coin. It took each to complete the value of the coin. Right? C.S. Lewis stated in another quote here, it says, Christians have often disputed as to whether what leads the Christian home is good actions or faith in Christ. It does seem to me like asking which blade of a pair of scissors is more important. Now think of that. Take a pair of scissors apart, they ain't no good for nothing. They gotta be together, they work together. And that's faith and works. That's faith and works. I thought that was a really good example. Clapping your hands. You gotta have two hands clap. One's faith, one's works. They all, they go together. They go together. Faith is not true faith until it's complete in obedience. Uh, now we want to go on into uh, verse 15 and seven, through 17. It says, If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. That's a, that's a good example that James uses here. It says, No one can be saved by works, neither can anyone be saved without producing works. Hmm. Now, We'll get into the, the, the lesson later about some things here. I'm actually getting there. But uh, what is the evidence of faith? How do we determine that uh, someone has faith? Is it because they come to church every Sunday? Is it because they, they live a good life? Is it because they're a good neighbor? Good neighbors are good to have, that's for sure. No. I don't think so. Do you? It's because I'm sitting in the church pew every Sunday. I have faith? Not necessarily. I mean, if we get real about this, that's what this lesson's about. If we get real about it. We cannot see faith. Right? But we can see the effects of faith. Amen? We can't see faith, but we can see the effects of it. Yeah. We're going we're to see a testimony. We're going to hear a testimony. We're going to see a card in the mail from someone. We're, we're going to see a hug. We're going to see a, a testimony. We're going to see something from that faith. It's not just, you can't see faith, but you see the effects of it. You can see what faith does to an individual. Amen? And that produces a work. Right? Um, going on and read verse 8. Let's see, I did. I'm going to read 18. It says, Yea, a man say, may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Now remember James is talking to these Jewish Christians here that some of them still want to adhere to the law, and some of them just believe that, hey, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I don't have to do nothing. So one's working, one ain't. Good English. That doesn't, that's, why, that's why this book was written here. He sees this, this parity between the two. He sees this difference between the two. That he has to straighten this out. So it takes both, folks. It takes both. 
You can't just work the law and not have faith. You can't have faith in Christ and not work. You've you got to have both. So that's the context of this verse here. And he, he says, says it pretty, pretty plainly. Uh, we need, we need um, and I'm talking about myself, that it's so easy to sit on the seat and do nothing. To relax, to be in Christ, to, to enjoy His love, to enjoy His fellowship, Roger, with the Spirit. But then, what are we doing with our faith? Amen? Because whatever that something is, God will show you what that something is for us to do. And when God shows us something to do, He'll give us the desire, and He'll give us the strength and the knowledge to do it. The thing is, is just getting able, getting up, and doing it. That's the hard part, right? We need to trust Him by faith. Amen? Uh, that, that's, I think that's where, as humans, we struggle, Rick. We, we struggle to take that first step. Uh, to take that first step, to do, be, be led by the Spirit to do something. Uh, what? Somebody's been on my heart. I need to send them a card. Or I need to send them a message. Well, I'll do it a little bit, right? If we wait, it'll pass. We just need to step out and do it. Yep. Now, uh, sometimes we do that and we think, oh, I get nervous. You know, I, I got I got a statement out here. I'll go ahead and read it. It's when we procrastinate that weakens our faith. Yeah. True. When God places a thought on our heart to do something, we should act then, not later. Yep. <laughs> if it's a good thought, do it. It may not always work. Have we ever done that? Yep. Oop, that didn't work. I shouldn't have said that. Or something. You do it anyway. If God yep. needs you, do it. What's that? God will make the difference. You know? And that also builds our faith. Our trust in Him. Our ability to maybe do another one next time, right? We need to understand His will. Act on faith. Trust Him to bless it. Press out. Be used to Him. Exercise your faith by working for Him. Amen. That's what we need to do. We need to press out and work for Him. Whatever it may be. And we'll get into some examples later. But it's going to be different for each and every one of us. Every one of us is different, thank you, right? Yeah. Uh, that there's going to be different things that we need to do. So it's important that we just do it. So we want to move on. And uh, we're still in the same verse. It says, James exposed the fictitious idea that there can be faith-only Christians and deeds-only Christians. Genuine faith and true works do not exist apart from each other. With much irony, James continued to show that without deeds, I will show you my faith by my deeds. Right? So, have you ever taught... Uh, well, I want to go down into uh, the next verse here. Verse 19. It says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. <coughs> have you ever talked to somebody and said, Yeah, I believe in God. What to do? What are you doing about it? Even the devils believe in truth, right? You know, I've talked to individuals in the, in the past that, yeah, I believe in God, and I go to church. Well, you find out they went to church on Easter, and maybe Christmas, and, and they believe in God. Even the devils believe in truth. Where's their faith? Where's that testimony? Where's the result of that faith? Right? That's what we're talking about. You can't see the faith, but you can see the effects of it. You don't see no effects of it. And individual I'm talking about got on my mind right now. Uh, hopefully they got, they got right. But to say that I believe in God and, and then have no show of faith is it, dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Uh, actions really prove they don't have faith in salvation. No church attendance, no testimony. Maybe a good neighbor, as we spoke before, you might be a very good person. And there's a lot of them out there. Yeah. But not have salvation. Not have faith in Christ. Not trusting Him. Not showing the work. 
of some kind. So, may I find through this? Woof, woof, uh, verses 21 through 26, we'll go ahead and read the, the rest of the chapter. This is, this is some meat here that I haven't really dig into. It says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, uh, getting back to some of what the lesson writer has to say here, and we'll get into some more, a lot more scripture. It says, you see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. Abraham's faith and actions work together in his effort to offer the promised heir as a sacrifice. He could have repeatedly said, I will offer it, my son, without ever coming to the point of faith. He reached that point when he raised the knife to do what he came to the mountain to do. When faith was complete in doing God intervened. When God seen Abraham's faith, when he had that knife raised, he said, okay, yeah, I'm intervening, there's a ram caught. Volumes have been written to explain some contradictions between verse 23 and Romans 4, 1 through 5. Now, I want to read Romans 4, 1 through 5. Because if we just read this on the surface, we kind of think, it's, it's, there's a contradiction not. It says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertained to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham was, were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not of God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the Lord, but reckoned of grace, but of death. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So, verse 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. If you took that one verse, it kind of sounds like, I don't have to work. Right? But if we take the whole verses in context, faith always comes first. Then the word. Faith always comes first. Now, James and Paul were not contradictory, but supplementary. They did not write this about the same faith. Paul wrote of a living faith, here in chapter 4, and James wrote of a dead faith. They did not write about the same works. Paul wrote of faith that works before, and James wrote of the works of faith after. Paul conjoined faith is similar to Ephesians 2 8. Now, I want to read Ephesians 2 8 through 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see there? You see this? It's saying, not of works. Well, Jeff, you've been talking about we need to work. I was, I was sitting here thinking, I was going to ask you a question. Uh, faith with work. You just by, you know. Mm -hmm. How about the one that's saved right at death's door? They don't have time for work, but they're saved just the same. Yeah. So that kind of explains yeah. some of that right there. Yeah. So there's no work. The thief on the cross? They saved, yeah. You put it right back yeah. to there. But just saved. like uh, yeah. Caleb said the other day, or they said, it's all right to ask God why. Because yeah. Christ said, right. why is that for sin? Yeah. You know, you got, we got those examples. But, but it says, not of works, lest any man should boast. But remember the first part of the verse. For by grace are you saved through faith. Yeah. The 
faith is always first. Yeah. We've got to take the whole verse. We can't argue that, not worthless, any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath both ordained that we should walk in them. So we got to remember, faith is always first and the works come. Now, also, in Philippians 2.12 says, Wherefore, my beloved brother, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. <coughs> For it is God which works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. A lot of action words in that verse there. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. So there's a lot of action words in this right here. And in Titus 3.8 it says, This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly. That they which have believed in God, might he be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Our works will be profitable unto men. So there's, there's action again there in Titus. In Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So... There's action involved in being a Christian. It's pretty plain. Uh, through the scriptures, it's not something I've said, it's something the Word of God has said. That there's definitely action required for the Christian. And it's more than just saying, I'm coming to church. Crickets. Well, what I'm thinking is, this all comes from God. The grace. Yes. The faith. Yes. And the work is because He put the grace and the faith in it. Yes, sir. It's all from God. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Jack, we so, have to have faith. Yeah. Or we would never get saved. Yeah. I mean, we would never go to an altar to pray right. if we didn't have faith that God would do something. Amen. Yeah. Yes. So we have to have a certain amount of faith. And exercise that faith before God will save us. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. We've got to believe and have faith that He can do something in our lives. Right. Yeah, that's a very good point. That is, if I step out as an unsaved individual from the truth, if I come to an altar, I'm just walking up to a bench. If I don't have faith and believe in Jesus Christ, because a lot of people get saved when they take that step. There's that. There's that faith that he can save me. There's that trust that he can save me when I come forward. Right? So, without that, I'm coming to the knee on that old bench. Right? Yep. So, good, very good point. Very good point. When we, when we take our kids to church and teach them about God, that is teaching them to have faith in God. Yep. And then, when... I've always told my kids and my grandkids, when you pray, you know, you, you know that there is a God and you love God. And when you ask God to forgive you of your sins, you have to mean it from your heart. Sure. And that's where faith steps in. You know, you have faith in God. You know that there is a God and, and that we love him. But when you ask for God's forgiveness, you need to ask from the heart earnestly. Amen. I, I always did emphasize that to my kids and grandkids. Because it works because that we need that. Don't forget. Right. Yeah. Yep. Takes a spirit to draw him. Yes. No man comes to the Father unless he be drawn by him. Some people don't get fully. When they get saved, they just don't realize that you got to have faith in God after you tell God after you tell the older mm -hmm. give your heart to him. Then you gotta believe. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and that, and to Nancy's point, your point on it, that that's a word. Yeah. It, it's a it's a word, yeah. expression of faith that 
if I come to the altar and, and believe, and I'm going to go home and I'm going to open this book up. All right? I'm going to start studying. I'm going to pray. And, and speaking to yes. grandkids to try to get them to come to church, that's work. That's yeah. part of this faith. Right? And share it. It's trying to get folks to come. Yeah. Amen? That's what God wants. He wants all men to come to repentance. Yes. Not willing any should perish. Amen. Right? So, that, that's our work. Uh, and there, there's a whole list of, of works, if you want to please. But it's going to be different. <coughs> See, we're, we're not saved by good works, but to do good works. Yeah. Amen? Faith is the foundation of, and good works are the fruit of salvation. So, uh, there was a, uh, there's some questions here that we can, we can do. But first of all, I'd like to get into your guys' maybe input on what is some of the things we can do to express our faith. I know uh, you guys have been down the road a lot farther than me and a lot more wiser than me and have done a lot of things through your life for Christ. But can we make a list of those, maybe? Uh, do you have any thoughts? I mean, I could start off like sending cards. That's a word. I love working with food pantry. Food pantry? You know, meeting the people, giving them a smile. Um, how should they go in? Yep. You know, just to see them and to know that in some way we are supplying a need that they have in their life. Amen. And to me, I get, I get more blessed <coughs> for the food pantry than, one of, than many of the things I've done in life, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to me, that's just one of the greatest ways to show God's love. Amen. What else? When we ask somebody to come to revival or, or uh, just ask them to come to church. Yeah. Like that. What's something that's really needed? And, and when you ask in love, then they feel that. And, and you know, they, they know that you would really like to have them sure. come to your church. You pray for people. Yep. Prayer. Amen. That's really neat. Yeah. Really neat. How about, uh, how about money? Yeah. Friendship. Friendship. Kindness. Yeah. We need a lot of that. Kindness. Love. Another thing I thought of, and I'm giving you mine here, and you guys give me some, is how about spiritual burden? Burden for souls, specific soul. Yeah. You know, a church that gets a burden for souls, man, that, that, there's things that happen. Yeah, man. There's one. Yeah, uh, there's many. I just don't. Know. But we get a spiritual burden for souls. Pray for them. Fight them. Yeah. Love them. Mercy. Yeah. I get encouraged a lot by the songs. Yeah. By the words. Yeah, you know. It tells you the story. Yes. And a lot of those stories we don't sing as often as we used to, like the old Red Cross and there's power in the blood. But, you know, when I hear those songs, I can have a mental picture in my mind, you know, what it meant for Christ to go to Calvary. Amen. What it meant for me for Christ to go to Calvary. Amen. Knowing that he shed his precious blood for me, for my sin. And I think that too often we just um, don't take the words to heart. You know, we need to take in and absorb the words and what they mean to, you know, to our Christian walk. And I get encouraged really with that. Amen. That's yeah. good. And you know, there's some things that go hand in hand, that's brought up, that a singer, that's part of the way they worship. Yeah. But that's also work. Yeah. You know, they practice that. You know, they, they feel God's leadership and they can learn a new song, you know, whatever it may be. And so there's some things that go hand in hand between worship and, and work. Well, sometimes singers, too, I don't really know how to explain it, but in their life, they're trying to focus on what song will mean to that person that's lost. Mm -hmm. You know, how can I portray a song? Yeah. And I think that's you know, one of the most wonderful things. It takes a lot of preparation. Yeah. It takes them being close to God. And then what songs are for that? 
yeah. being spirit led. Yeah. When you say work, is it? Are you using it like this is a work, as in a noun, or work as a verb? Like this is work. Mm -hmm. Action. I think <coughs> to me the work is a noun because it's a privilege to be able sure. yeah. to witness. Man, I don't see that as work. No. Now, maybe I'm not looking at it right. I'm, I'm thinking this is a work. To me, work is to get out there and hoe the garden or dig in the ditch. Sweat. Yeah, yes. And I think to be able to witness to someone or to feed them a meal yeah. or to send them a card, that's a privilege to me. Yeah. That's, yeah. That blesses me too. You know, it's not work. So. If, you, if you want to do it, it's not yeah. work. Right. Yeah. No, it, it. It's a privilege. James uses yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. James uses work as, a, as work. A, yeah. a word it's to express that. Right. Yeah. But yeah. even as a noun, it takes action. Yeah. True. Yeah. Now, yeah. we're not saying sweat. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm thinking. It's like, it's right. not work, work. Yeah. work. <laughs> but, but to God, it is a work. You're sure. doing a work for Him. Yeah. Well, when that's, you do these things, it's a work. I don't know what other kind of word you. Used yeah. I know. That's why I was sitting here. My mind is on. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Eddie, is yeah, it, it's it's something you want to do. Yeah. Because it's really it's not work when you want to do it. Yeah. yeah. As far as when you say you're going through a list of works, well, when you say list, it's like a predetermined number. I think on that list it goes down now, and then at the bottom it says etc. Yeah. Yeah. Dot 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 etc. Yeah. Because we're all different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can't put a, a, a list, yeah. a number on exactly. God, God's in it. And we're all different, so he's going to yeah. give us all something right. different. Right? You know, you know, Jamie may send a very nice card. I may say something funny. Card. You know, there's a difference there. It's just, don't send me a funny card. But anyway, there's a difference and then the, uh, the same thing because we're different. Amen. So that list, yeah, that's him. Amen. Um, there's a one, one quote I'd like to get through here. It says, I've been reading a, Mark, a, a book by Mark Batterson, and it says, I think most of us are far too tentative when it comes to the will of God. We're so afraid of making the wrong decision." That we make a decision, we make no decision. And no decision is a decision. It's called indecision. Did you get that? We're so afraid of making the wrong decision that we make no decision, and no decision is a decision. It's called indecision. Yeah. Well, it's just like when God tells you to do something, you don't do it. Yeah. And if we procrastinate on that, It'll fall by the wayside. Yeah. And if we procrastinate, it's not what God wants us to do. Now, and when, when we think God wants us to do something, we just need to do it. Yeah. If we find out it was the wrong time, build on that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I didn't mind God like I should. Next time we will. Yeah. And we get. That's how we learn, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just you know, it might not have an end result like we imagined in our mind, but if we can plant that seed, it might be a year later. Yep. You know, you have to wait, let that seed grow sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Amen. One last scripture. 1 Peter 2, 11 through 12. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may say, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. So there'll be people talking about us anyway. Do it anyway. Yeah. Amen? Praise the Lord. God, perfect time.